And here's some of the stuff we found. So as, if you've been by the booth, you saw that we found the prototypes for the Star Sisters, which is a pretty awesome find. <laughs> Um, these are just three of them. There were multiples of each one. These are the ones in the best condition. They have been in boxes for 30 years. But what was pretty cool is Mattel didn't even know we still had these. <laughs> uh, it, was, uh, it was an engineer's box who had received samples from Asia for them to review, and he just happened to package them up and stick them back in a box, and we opened it up, and there they were. Um, so it's, it's pretty awesome. The condition is surprising for 30 years, and to open it up, we were both like, you know, it's like a holy grail moment that you're like touching these models and getting to hold them. So. We also found um, package proofs for the Star Sisters. So here is the black and white one that they would have made all their comments on to send to Hong Kong to do adjustments to. So this is for um, Jewel Star. This is the package artwork for Glory Bird. So you can see that he was going to have the um, crystal theme all around and then his package artwork on the back, the photography. And just so you guys know, we're going to put together a PDF of all this art too and give it to Val to post to Hema.org so everyone will be able to see these without watermarks. Yeah. We're going to call things for them so everyone can see this and enjoy it. And, uh, what you can see is the Star Sisters name is actually a gold foil stamp. This is the insert that would have been behind Glory Bird um, in the production package. And then this is just the blank artwork for the package of Glory Bird. And then we found the Star Sisters packaging, <laughs> which was pretty freaking exciting. Um, obviously, there's new artwork on the back for each of them. It talks about what their feature was with photography of the actual dolls, and then has that really cool um, gem uh, insert for them to stand in front of. And then you get Tall Star. We'll leave it up a second so you guys take pictures. So. <laughs> <laughs> And then we had Jewel Star. And then what was really cool is, this is just a photo of it on the next page, but it's the actual painting of the background for the package artwork. So we found that in the archives as well, which was pretty cool. It just slid between some packaging stuff. We pulled it out and it's like an actual painting that you're finding. So it's pretty awesome. And then we stumbled upon some drawings for perhaps a never made playset. Yeah, so this is a chair that we found. We found like a vanity and a, a little treasure chest. And then there's a schematic for something that how to put it together. You can see like a staircase. It's a very rough drawing of how it might go together. Then some external art for our left view and right view of what the front of it looks like. A back view. Some additional technical call-outs of what sizes would be, what shapes things need to be more pieces that go inside of it, calling out for art and things like that. And we found pictures of the Whispering Woods playset. Wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there was a Whispering Woods playset planned. It went to model build and they This is the first prototype. There were, we may have pictures of another one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first one they built. It was meant to be, um, you speak into the, the pink girl, she would you talk into her and then your voice would come through the playset and there was actually a head of the Oracle or they called it Light Hope actually in the, on the stuff. So you would speak as Light Hope to all of she and her friends. So this is the back view where the white is was where the face is and there was a light that would, as you talked, it would flash. So it would be your voice coming through as Light Hope. So you're saying you can still release it. <laughs> <laughs> we have pictures, there's no tools or anything left. We have pictures of stuff. So, so this is just detail shots of the um, microphone that you would speak into. This Here's is the place, the place that's open, open with no accessories. So you can see there's like a little curtain and a place to get ready. Um, the stuff underneath the staircase was like a waterfall that was done with fabric. So I can, we have the packaging strategy which gave the product description for the Whispering Woods. So it was going to be $39.95, um, the trademark cleared. So Whispering Woods is the magnificent deluxe playset for 1987. It is the home of Light Hope, Keeper of All Truths. It's molded in lavender and pink to resemble a fantasy wooded thicket from outside. Its panels open to reveal many unique features. Status like microphone reverberates when spoken into Light Hope, lights up and pulsates to reveal her beautiful face. They called it a hurry when there was a man in the show. <laughs> Sweeping staircase that dolls can pose upon. Fantasy furniture with many small accessories, which included a throne, a birdcage, a treasure chest, um, goblets, potion vials. There are labels with fantasy stickers, um, the Light Hope dome, a rocking bed with plush mattress, a potion table, and a secret message table with book. 
And this is the outside view of it, so the back and sides. I mean, the sculpting is beautiful on it. We were like, wow, this is amazing. I want this. It was meant to be more deluxe than Crystal Castle. And then, I know it's really hard to see. It's all we could find. This is the same place that was some furniture placed in it. These are Polaroids. Yeah. So we just scanned in the Polaroids. And back then, you know, it was like quick pictures just trying to take for reference and stuff. So a lot of them are blurry, but we wanted to show you guys what we, everything that we found. So they did some without the flash, I think. <laughs> and then what you see here is the next model. So after going through some cost reductions, they have redone it so that you no longer spoke into it and it spoke for you. It would just light up and flash. And so you can see opening, obviously the girl sort of went away and it turned into more of a swan stand and the staircase became shorter and sort of simplifying things for production because at one point they decided to bring the price down so it was going to have to be less expensive so they had to find ways to make it for cheaper yeah we went through a lot of memos because they didn't have email back then so it's just reading through memo after memo after memo of what was changing and making sure we're lining up the years we understood what changes were happening um, but here you can see it, it's more put together with a little bit better color That might be the last one. So some of the other stuff we found, there weren't photos for, but there were descriptions of, so. Um, we wanted to walk you through at least what that is, because we found characters no one's ever heard of before, which looks like they got models built, so we're still looking for those, so hopefully, you know, soon we'll be able to show you guys what those look like. So with, this was for the 1987 line, so with Bubble Power, she and Cash Rick for that year, there was also supposed to be a revised bow. At some point he was dropped, but he's mentioned on a lot of the, um, uh, schedules that we have. Then you get Aneta, who is the stand-in name for Natasa. Um, and then there was also a deluxe switch went. Part of the wave two was going to be a Mythicon dragon, which no idea what that's supposed to look like, but it's mentioned a few times. Yeah. It's on the line list as it was continuing through the normal standard process, so we're hoping we'll find pictures or drawings of what this Mythicon dragon looks like. There is a character named Aura who we're not sure who she's supposed to be. There's no physical description of what she's supposed to be. She was dropped early on in the schedule, so we're still trying to see if there's early designs of her, because at some point you have to pass it on to the um, development team. There is also Spydra, who was going to be like Web Store, so she would have his same feature where she would drop from a web, and her fashion would have extra legs on it, so it looked like they were moving. And she was going to be done in black and reds. Yeah, she just always in black and reds. And then one of the things that we found to show you as we're reading through, they actually, in order to get ideas for what features girls would like, they would show them the Masters of the Universe catalog and be like, okay, this character does this, and this and this, and they go through all the characters and their features and they find out which ones they like the best. And girls like, I think there was a comment like, girls like Grizzler was cute and furry, you know? <laughs> so they knew they could do like a fuzzy character. And they thought web stores, uh, you know, him were tracking up was really cool. So they could take those and sort of twist it to have that girl version of it. Um, so it was really interesting that they just took directly from Masters of the Universe to see which ones they liked the best for Shira. There was also a character named Joya, who, if you guys are familiar with the Bubble Maiden, that was her. She was initially designed as a new character that would have a bubble feature, and they were working on a more deluxe feature for she but were having trouble getting it cost, and I found a memo that says, Joy will be dropped, we need to keep that feature moving so that we can use it for she -Ra. So she, she did exist. <laughs> Joy was an actual character, so that, that is an actual illustration in the bubble carriage that some of you have seen online. That is an actual new character. What is it, Joya? Joya, yes. Joya. Joya. And the bubble carriage was actually called Effervesa. It had a name before it became the bubble carriage. Uh, what else do we find? Yeah, so in, what date is this? Oh, there isn't a date. But there was an outgoing Telex, which I don't even know what that is. Oh no, is. 1686. Yeah, is when they decided that Joya would be dropped, but we need to move forward with the bubble solution to make sure it could work for the feature Shira. Um, so then we found some initial brainstorm notes where they were talking about different um, toys that they could make. At one time they were thinking of making a Bright Moon playset. It didn't get past the um, brainstorm stage, but they did list out what they would do and like how it was Angela and Glimmer's home. Um, they were going to have it glow in the dark and have it be composed of translucent material and then would pivot to expose different rooms within the playset. I'm just reading what their description was. And again, we'll we'll post all the CS and sort of read through all of it too. It's, it's very interesting to read through all the descriptions and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. It was, we had fun just sitting there reading, you know, through all of this stuff. So. so after the initial 85 line, the first line, they were actually going to do a whole snow theme for the second one and it was going to focus on Frosta and they were going to make Castle Chill. At some point, obviously that was completely dropped, but um, 
They had a whole line of new characters. So there was Mirina, who I think actually ended up evolving into Mermista, because she was a girl who transformed into a mermaid. You had Amber, the evil lady. She glows with heat and tries to melt Castle Snow. There was the Snow Queen, who was the queen of Castle Snow, but was not related to Frosta. There's Tara, who's the beauty of the earth. She's scented like a flower and can make things grow. She later became Perfuma. There's Crystalla, who is a sister of Frosta. She's composed of translucent ice and become transparent to spy on the enemies. There was the Snow King, who reigns with the Snow Queen. He's a handsome man with fur boots that lace up to the knees. <laughs> That's the description. Uh, there was also, there's gonna be She-Ra, she's new. She's gonna have um, a new fashion with arm mechanism, sheer cape and reversible outfit that had fur on it so that she was winter themed. And Kasha was gonna get a winter themed um, outfit as well. There are going to be three new horses that were transparent. A horse for Cristalla, uh, Sprasa's sister, the Snow Queen, and the Snow King. And then a snow cat for Catra. As well as a crystal sled, which was going to be pulled by a polar bear or a husky. And then they talked about these crystalettes, which they said are just cute, mischievous characters. I think they were meant to be like the Twiggets. And then another place of idea was Volcanica. So it's the volcanic pools and waterfall environment next to the Talon Mountains at the edge of the Fright Zone. It was meant to be a beautiful falls and pool with water play involved, so if you think of the Crystal Falls. Um, it was a jeweled door turns to break the waterfall and become the secret passageway to the inside. The waterfall turns into falls of red lava by the deliberate intentions of Volcana and her evil powers. Inside this environment exists underground caves which are lined with jewels and crystals. The set includes water play. It will be proposed as a major and mid-price playset. Um, and then it ties closely to the um, show by tying back to the Talon and the Fright Zone. So the figures that they're going to do in line with it are Volcana, who's the fire goddess. She has x-ray vision and flame red hair. Her arms are sculpted with flames. Her cape is composed of flames that rise upward and give her control over the volcano. She doesn't start fires, that's made clear. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> Marina the Mar Maiden, who's a mermaid, came back again. I think this was in, um, they were going to do oppositions, either snow or fire. There was Tara, who's the beauty of the earth, who was, she just had, um, she can make vines grow, and there's another character named Jasmine who had sent. They have notes to combine, and that's, I think, where Perfuma was born. They have Ariel, beauty of the winds, who controls the sky and weather. Her costume of soft sheer fabric designed like the clouds and wind. There was Lavor, the good-looking lava man. A villain. <laughs> make sure those men are good-looking, right? <laughs> a villain who has power to lift large lava rocks. <laughs> no mention of his boots, I don't think he wore any. But by turning a mechanism on the chest, a lava shield appears to deflect bow's arrows. And then Amber, who is Volcana's twin sister on the side of good, made another appearance. So instead of being evil, she's good in this one. Um, and then they were going to do, like the snow one, they had the rocklets, which were mischievous rock people. <clears throat> the vehicles were going to be Breeze, an imaginary whimsical vehicle who transforms from water to land and holds one figure. Somewhat like a seahorse, he is on the side of good but can be controlled by wicked powers of Catra and Volcana. And then a whimsical dragon which carries several figures, not frightening for girls, and could be a mid price point. <laughs> um, so we found that actually initially there were four star sisters. So there was going to be uh, Tallstar, whose original name was Telescopa, because she, um, oh, I'm sorry, Telescopa is actually the fourth one. She was supposed to shrink. I don't, I think they realized that it was kind of an impossibility to do. So she got dropped at some point. From the descriptions, it sounds like, remember those cups in the 80s that would like, you could just collapse down? It's not like she's going to do that. But I think it just became too difficult for her size to be able to get her to condense down. So, and then Starla was originally called Electra. And... Jewel Star was Splendora, and then Tall Star was Expandra, and then Glory Bird started out as Adventure Animal. <laughs> <laughs> I like that name better. Adventure Animal. Yeah. And then we found that everything was handwritten. We handwritten line lists that show like Spider got really far along, and she was mentioned that she's been shown at Toy Fairs, much like it was mentioned that the Whispering Woods place that was shown at Toy Fairs and shown to girls too. So we knew we know there's pictures somewhere because they did photograph all the Toy Fairs. So we're currently getting all of those Toy Fairs that were videotaped digitized, so that way we can watch through and see if we can find any pictures of this stuff. Um, so hopefully we'll have better images. Um, I mean, hoping that maybe we find the models at some point, but. Unfortunately, the archives, a lot of it is like, it's just labeled design. So there's not 
image, there's no, no notification of what's inside of it, so it takes a long time to get through, because this was just us typing in She-Ra and Princess of Power and having stuff delivered to us and going through everything that we could find. Um, but I mean, it was amazing what we could find just by typing that in. So we're excited to keep looking and see what else we can find uh, for Princess of Power. So, but we definitely wanted to be able to share with you guys because we know like, it's always like, well, what else were they gonna do? I mean, we have it in front of us now, what was planned. And I mean, we, it's sad we found the memo of when she was dropped. Like, it's like, here's the memo out to the team. That August 26, 1986 is when she was officially done. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's, it's great that we were able to find it. It's very sad to be reading through it. You know, they talk about thank you to the team. It's a very nice memo that went out to everyone. So. But we did find, like, in a lot of their brainstorm notes, they were looking to do characters from the show. So they had written down potentially doing Seahawk and Madame Raz and all that for the line. It's just it never really made it to fruition. So. They would keep mentioning them over and over in brainstorm. So I think the designers definitely wanted to do them. So, um, but yeah, that's that's what we found. Um, We'll have images, these images on the slides we'll have in the booth, so you guys can come by and take a closer look at them. Um, and then if you guys have any questions, we'll be more than happy to answer what we can. I just know we do, don't have any answers about Masters Universe Classics. I'm very sorry. We asked for information. The only information we were giving was to please post to the Maddie Collector Facebook page or wait for an announcement closer to Comic-Con. So I wish we could help with answers for stuff, but we just don't have that knowledge with us. And then at the booth, and I can flip to them, there's like 200 some images. We have artwork from Errol McCarthy oh, yeah. of the Master of the Universe stuff. So, characters, yeah. yeah, so wow. you get, and there's some surprise stuff too in there, so that'll be at the booth that you can flip through. Yeah, it's um, a great thing to just sit and look through, so we have a... Uh, there's a ton of it. Yeah. There's what, like two? Yeah, there's like 200, and there's some stuff that no one's ever seen before for toys that we haven't made. <laughs> We still have plenty of time. Yeah, so if you guys have questions, we'll flip through this while we um, do it. And again, we'll, we're, we'll have a PDF, so this stuff will all go up on here or too, so you guys will be able to view it uh, at your leisure afterwards, too. Okay. Uh, so officially, there's, there's no information on Masters of the, of the Universe Classics, but unofficially, uh, don't you think that Snake Mountain set uh, we saw last year looked really cool? Yes. 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 I, I am totally on board with Snake Mountain, but we have no control over that. So, but we love, I've seen the Snake Mountain sitting at Mattel. It's uh, beautiful. I want one too. So. How, how big is it, you think it is? Uh, we, never, we only saw the sample that was at Comic-Con. That's what's sitting there. So we, I never saw the revised size, but it's still pretty, it was still pretty big. Oh, so there, you're saying there's a revised size? Well, well they're, they're working on, like they said, they're working on a shorter version. So just because they had to bring it in a little a bit. Shorter so version? A smaller one, yeah. Okay. Will it come with the figure? <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you it comes Thank you guys. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Other questions? Come on down. Everyone's mesmerized by the Errol McCarthy <laughs> artwork. The art is awesome. I just wanted to say thank you. Oh, oh how many thank times you. we come to PowerCon and we go here to see fellow fans and hang out and laugh and uh, I think we, you know, going to filmation panels and stuff, we get the same information, we get to relive it, but to actually come in and see so much new stuff yeah. for 1986, 1987, can't thank you enough. Oh, you're very welcome. I mean, we, we're fans too, so when we saw this, like, we have to share this. So we made sure we went through all the proper channels, got all the signatures so we could show all this stuff, because we know Mattel is very protective, and rightfully so, their IP and stuff like that, but uh, we want to be able to share this with you guys, because one of those things like it's so exciting to learn about what could have been for you know the lines that we loved when we were kids it said that light hope was female and, and you revealed her face but it was really kind of hard to see is there a, a an image of her face in there no. there is if you um come to the booth and look you think you can see a bit closer it's really hard to see because it had a like a flower almost over it so you're looking through two layers of plastic to see it but it was molded to the uh, and, it, and it would light up from the inside yes. to so reveal like a, a uh, one color sculpted face that would light up from the inside yeah. very cool very cool and it was much like stick mountain it was just you is a voice changer that you're talking through to be like hope so when does that come out <laughs> <laughs> More questions? Come on up. Well, actually, I just want to just jump off what he just said. So I guess I'll use the Star Sisters as just the easiest example. But if you guys do come across, this is obviously crystal ball stuff, but if you come across any prototypes of figures that haven't been out and the interest is there, would 
just at least pass along to Mattel that even in a vintage capacity, we would like to maybe see those maybe offered in some way? Yeah, I mean, we'll go back and tell everyone, hey, people really want the Star Sisters done today, but look like the vintage toys. We will try. I can't promise anything. Like, like the commemorative line. Yeah, but we, I mean, we would love to see them too. I want to add them to my Shira collection as well, you know? I don't get to take these ones home. They gotta stay at Mattel, so. Um, we would definitely, if you guys come by, talk to us and let us know. We'll go back and say, hey, can we look into and, redoing yeah. them for today? And now we have packaging artwork so we can potentially... And we have the samples for us to be reference to them, too. So. And I'll leave you in this. Um, what was your biggest challenge uh, with the Comic-Con exclusive? Uh, I think the biggest challenge, I mean, luckily the, the team was like, do what you want, so we did. Um, the biggest challenge is when we sent the initial sculpt to Asia, it took three weeks to get it back to the sculpt that we wanted. So they completely re-engineered the doll, changed all the sculpting on her. We were not happy with how it looked, so it was a long process of emails every day and conference calls to get them to go back to the, the body that we wanted. So it met the expectations that we had because we have one chance to get it right for you guys and I wanted to make sure it was the best she I could possibly deliver because it's, it's my ass on the line if it doesn't look good because I'm the one who designed it. So we worked really hard to make sure that she lived up to the expectations for she or Princess of Power, you know, making sure she looked like the most powerful woman in the universe. And it was really labor of love. I mean, we do this on top of our day job. So this was like on top of, I was doing illustrations at that point. I had 200 illustrations to get done for Monster High and I was actually drawing 60 of them. So it was, a, you know, when I have time to do this, finding time to do this so that we could get it right. But the passion exists within the, yeah. the walls of Mattel for Masters of the Universe and Princess of Power. Like, people were so excited to get to be a part of to work on it. That's why there's a huge thank you list on the back, because those people put in extra time and effort to be able to make this thing come to life. I think a lot of times we don't realize how many people it takes to make a toy at Mattel. It is a lot. We have soft goods people and hair people and face paints and model makers and all these people that make it so that we can make these toys come to life for you guys and so and all of our asia counterparts too so you know it's, there's people on the plant sewing these outfits and hand putting the dolls together it's not quite as automated as automated as what people think we do have some automation but it's still a lot of people putting these things together so you know when you make a con you have to remember you're telling someone that they're not doing their job right and you want to fix it so <laughs> but like a uh, fun story the uh face painter who painted the prototype for Shira. Um, this doll actually painted the original Shira face. Wow. Yeah, she's been in Mattel long yeah. enough that she painted yeah, the original so Shira face. So like, I was like, oh, Aww. can you paint this? It's for Shira. She's like, oh, I painted the original. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, so. Now her name's on the package, A Fong. She's super talented. I mean, she did a lot of the, if you guys are familiar with Monster High, she did a lot of Monster High faces too for the initial concept. So she's super talented. So she knew what Shira needed to look like. So it was amazing. Uh, nice longevity in this industry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Other questions? Was there ever any consideration to make this ultimate She-Ra in the classic scale with interchangeable outfits to get all the different designs of She-Ra, or was it always destined to be larger doll scale? She was always destined to be a larger doll scale from when we said, because they, they saw the fans were asking for sort of a 12 inch Barbie uh, She-Ra, so we were trying to accommodate that ask. Um, we did feel, as much as we love Barbie, we both worked on her, we wanted Shira to have her own body and that's why we pushed to get an all new sculpt and they were on board with it, so we were able to get that. I mean, we would love to, as we said before, continue making more, do additional characters, do go into the Masters characters too and do an awesome He-Man buffed out sculpt. Um, so if you guys show interest in this, please talk about it. Please say positive things about it. You can nitpick it, it's fine. I know you're gonna find things wrong with it. Totally cool, because that, that'll help us improve things too. You know, Just be nice about it, we're people too. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but we, we wanna see this come to life and do more characters. I mean, I wanna do all of the Prince of Power characters and then go into the He-Man characters and see all the things that we get made at this scale, so. Uh, so this item, um, this will be the only uh, Shira or Mass of the Universe themed exclusive item at Comic Con this year, officially. Yes. yes. Officially. Or unofficially, you can you know move your head or something. No, this is the only <laughs> item that is related to He Man, Mass of the Universe, Prince of the Power that we offer at Comic Con. The the only one. The yes. only one. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions. Come on down. So, so um, there's two different sorts of protection in this in this package. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I know that it's not in the same style as like the vintage action figure right. sword protection. Was there any reason behind that or just, I want to design another sword? <laughs> what, uh, our sculptor, he is an avid swordsman. He like collects swords and loves swords. He doesn't like Shiro sword or He-Man sword because it doesn't look like a real sword. You can't, this doesn't function as a real sword. So it made him very angry. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> So what I did, I said, okay, well, let's look at all the He-Man swords that we have, because Shearer's is a thinner version of He-Man, so we looked at the Sideshow Collectibles one that they're doing, all the ones from the comic, and we just pulled up the reference and said, okay, you can design it, but it's got to feel like these ones. And we'll do that for Shearer for her original outfit, because hopefully if we can continue the line, we'll do a Shearer and original outfit with the original sword from the toy. Um, so he took that design, so it has like the horns on the side, and he put some detailing from swords that typically had the detail in and place the gem in there and made sure it looked like it could fit into the He-Man world. It was really inspired sort of amalgamation of He-Man swords. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm, I'm looking at this art and it's, it's amazing. Uh, what are chances of getting like a book of, or something? I mean, I just have a PDF of it. That's all I have. Um, uh -huh. yeah. Dark Horse? Yeah. Are you here? Yeah, I mean, Dark Horse. You know, like, maybe they'll do so, another book with it's a high PDF, high. but I don't know where the original stuff is. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks. You can sell the PDF on Kindle. Or something. <laughs> it's okay. We'll post it for free. You guys can have it. The, actually, the artist who did this, Errol McCarthy, is a guest here at PowerCon, so you can go to his table and ask him about. It. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful stuff. We had fun looking through all of this. Uh, and it's just... At some point, it gets to color too. I don't know if any colors have appeared. Not yet. It's a lot. <laughs> Other questions? You guys are, uh, are you open to also answering Monster High questions? Are there Monster yeah. High fans here? <laughs> <Sure. laughs> if, if the feedback is there on the Shearer prototype, how deep would you like to go into this line? Make them all. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, Darren and I put together a, a five-year plan of, of our dream if we six could do a uh, six-year, sorry, a subscription, <laughs> <laughs> a subscription plan that would offer all of the Princess of Power characters. So we could get them done in six years, it'd be about four figures a year with a couple extra for like Comic-Con and stuff like that, but we can get through all of the Princess of Power characters, so. Including a couple that you just heard about today. We are incorporating this, we're hoping we can find designs and then make an actual toy of them as well, so. But again, that's all preliminary, nothing is set in stone. We have no approval to do any more dolls. This is the only one right now, so if you guys want more, show support and we'll get you more. Other questions? Somebody's coming. This is this is my little monster eye. Right? <laughs> <laughs> She's a bit shy. That's okay. Go ahead and ask him which one. No. Oh, come on. <laughs> she, she wants to know if you guys are ever gonna do uh, the parents of the dolls from Monster High. Well, for our our Comic Con episode this year, uh, we have Rebecca and Hexakaya. So he's the first family member that we're a parent that we're doing. So it's very exciting. So hopefully it'll start a trend of additional uh, parents as well. So if you guys like him, say so, and we can make more parents. Okay. Yeah, and then just so you know, I found out after designing the package that it actually has to be hand um, done. <laughs> like, because it's so large, it's someone's has to hand lay down all of the panels of the package and put them down on the game board. And I was like, oh, I'm really sorry. Oh, so well. so well. Thank you so much for doing it. Yeah. Other questions? Whoa. So what's it? What? What is oh, okay. So that's from the, that's from the Strobo wave that would never came out. Ah. The parts were used. Ah. Yeah. This was the 80, that was from the 88 wave that was never released. I mean, I can confirm that it's her since it was leaked by WB. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that she is, I mean, she looks amazing. I've seen her. She looks awesome. She is done like high end with premium material. She comes with extra pieces that should they do a katana later, she wouldn't come with. Obviously, she has to be the Comic-Con exclusive, but I think you guys are going to love her when you see her. She should be soon, announced soon, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Questions? 
there are additional reveals coming to Maddie. The, we saw a whole schedule, so there should be more this week. So every day they're supposed to be unveiling something. So just keep checking back for there for additional lines and their exclusives. What's it like working at Mattel? <laughs> <laughs> It's fun. I mean, you realize you're working for a large corporation, so you, you have to take some things into account. You just can't do whatever you want. So as much as we'd like to just do a lot of this stuff, there's numbers, you know, they have a huge pool of people that they have to employ, so we have to be strategic about stuff. So it is a lot of like showing why and how we can do this. So um, the more you guys are supportive of stuff, the more we can say people love this and they want it. it I've been telling some people it's hard when things get so negative on the boards because a lot of times the upper manager reads it and say, these people don't want this line anymore, let's just get rid of it. So we need, I understand it's like you're so passionate, it's not that way too, you're so passionate that you're getting angry that we're not, you're not getting the stuff that you want, but we gotta remember to keep a little bit of a positive turn so it doesn't look like you, you don't want anything anymore, you just want things to continue because you want these things like we do and, you, and the designers want to keep making them, so um, feel free to be to criticize, but also put, you know, like, I'm doing this because I love it and I want to keep buying Masters of the Universe. So that's the key word is I want to keep buying Masters of the Universe. <laughs> so that way we can go back to our upper man and be like, yes, they still want it. You know, yeah. there's things that we, <laughs> and there's all those things we can work on. And that's what's so great about now is we have instant feedback when you guys get stuff about, oh, this is wrong or this, and we can fix it as quick as we can. Now production, it's hard to stop things and fix right away, but where we can, we try to fix things as early as possible. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know, uh, a telex is a network of teleprinters that was used to send text-based messages um, via these uh, teleconnected uh, printers um, on paper. So before you could send a text message on your smartphone, you used a printer. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Now we know. <laughs> and knowing is half, no, that's a dumb idea. <laughs> Um, you guys said you were fans as, uh, as kids, um, so what was it uh, about Masters of the Universe and Princess of Power that sort of resonated with you and made you love it? I think the biggest thing is they were twins and we were twins, so there were not a lot of twin characters out there, um, so that was nice. Uh, so we played with He-Man and She-Ra, we had Crystal Castle across from, you know, the Castle Grey Skull and then Snake Mountain around the corner, so it was always playing with all of them together. And I mean, we came in around when she came out and He-Man had been out for a while, so we always just assumed, like, Secret of Sword is a show of them together a lot of the time, so we were playing with them together most of the time. I, I remember playing with Swiftwind, and I was four at the time that Shear came out, so I, my hands couldn't get the saddle on and off. I remember taking it to my parents, and like, can you put the saddle on? Can you take the saddle off? Like every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Anybody? Yeah, I mean, we're totally collectors too. In college, we went through the whole, like, we need all of the Shearer stuff, so we got all of it. We have a Spinnerella, which is amazing. Um, you know, so we're, we're totally there too. We love all, so finding this stuff out and getting to see it, we were like, you know, it is really holy grail stuff when you are a lover of toys and lovers of masters and princes of power, so. And thankfully, we were able to share it all with you guys, so, and digging through the stuff. Are you gonna continue um, searching through the Mattel archives to yes. try to find more material? Oh, yes, yes. Awesome. We're, we're hoping that we can find more and share it with you guys too, so. When did you guys decide that you wanted to work together? Uh, I started Mattel first, and then he came in a couple of years later. For a while we were together in packaging. We were on a brand called Mycene, and we did the packaging together. Um, and then we, he sort of went to... I went to Barbie and worked on the entertainment stuff. Um, so the, all the movies that come out, Diamond Castle, Thumbelina, I worked on all the packaging for that. And I started doing <laughs> And I started working on Monster High, and uh, then it's, I mean, we've always kind of worked together. I mean, we're twins, we live in the same building, not the same apartment, we carpool together to work, we work at the same place, so it's been super fun to be able to work on this because we can basically make decisions for each other because we know, like, yeah, that'll be fine, Carol will be fine with that, or Darren will be fine with that. <laughs> um, we can do the leeway stuff, you know, it's like, hey, I need some more money so we can get this on the doll. Okay, I can take this out of the package. <laughs> yeah, that, so, that makes it a little bit easier when you're working with each other, so. Can you guys explain the process, I guess, from early, you know, design phase, prototyping, 
um, the involvement as much as you can. Of sure. Corporate, you know, like you say, you, they cost down the we, the Willows place at that kind yeah. of stuff, and then uh, the education you guys both have to kind of lead you to the positions you're in. Oh, sure. Are you referring specifically to like the eighty stuff or in no, general at Mattel? Oh, no, just kind of toy design in general. Yeah. So I mean, typically it's like you're. When you work on a line, they're established like a brand direction for the year and everyone knows what that is. And they have a line list and you're filling slots for certain things. You have certain price points that you have to hit and you're working on what will fit into those slots. So the designers will work on concepts for that and they present it out to the team. Oh, thank you. They present it out to the team and uh, people, everyone will have to sign off on it. So there's a lot of approvals. Uh, design has to approve it, marketing has to approve it. Um, and then you have to like engineering has to say yes we can actually make that toy you know if it's complicated uh, and then from there once the initial concept is approved we start prototyping so a lot of nowadays with digital sculpting it makes it fairly easy to prototype it's still expensive and doesn't it's not as fast as you hope it is um, but it is much faster than having to wait for somebody to hand sculpt something to take a look at it um, we can do outfits pretty quickly Shira went pretty fast um, I gave my reference to uh, Adam for sculpting, and I think within like two weeks I had a sculpt to look at digitally on my computer. I could spin it around in a PDF, zoom in, see what everything was, look at all the structure and stuff like that. So that makes looking at stuff easy. I still like to look at 3D stuff because no matter how detailed the 2D is, it can always change once you get it in the hands in 3D. So we do like to print out still as designers and take a look at what it is that is being made. Um, then from there, there are in a typical line, there's cost reductions because we over-design sometimes because we're trying to get as much as we can in. And so you'll look at what paint ops you can reduce or what fabric you can switch something to, um, those type of things to get the item to cost to meet what uh, we need to. And then from there, once we have it all buttoned up and everyone says, yes, this is the cost, this is what it should look like, we're good to go for production and Asia starts working on building tools, signing the samples to review, and all that stuff. Um. The, uh, what was the Eldor card back there? That's cool. Um, oh. The uh, mini comic that's coming with the Shira exclusive. Um, if more characters come out in the line, will they all um, come with mini comics? That's and the will, idea. Yeah. Uh, and will they be new stories or adaptations of uh, filmation stories or other mini comics? Um, I mean, we haven't really thought that far ahead just yet, but um, I mean, you guys can certainly voice what you'd like on the boards, and we will take a look at that. I think. For time constraints and to be ease of approval, we went with a story that existed because we wouldn't have to create all new art and figure everything out. And so we had some reference to do with Rashira. Plus, her story is pretty well known. So to tell her origin story, we're not going to change a whole lot. Um, and so we just went with that. But yeah, the artist's name is Kelly Riley, and she did a beautiful job. She did most of the artwork for the package, um, including the comic. The only thing she didn't do is the illustration on the back panel um, that was done by a guy named Darko Dvorak. Um, are there any other questions to close things off here? Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. Round of applause. And again, we'll have all this out at the booth.